How's it going, AWE? Having fun so far? Well, we're going to have fun today. So I'm May Rohn. I run a company called Meta. And uh, of course, we build augmented reality headsets. Um, I've been looking forward for a very, very long time to showing off uh, what we're going to show off today. Today, we're going to open up a brand new user interface paradigm, a brand new operating environment for augmented reality that will open up the paradigm in, in, in the next era of computing, we, we believe, we hope. It's, it's, it's that serious. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, we wanted to give a teaser here at AWA first. Um, the journey of how everyone in this crowd probably realize that augmented reality of the, is the future, and it's not locked inside one of these flat devices, is, is uh, a really cool thing. And I'd like to share with you today the journey of how Meta and myself really came to figure out that AR is the future. And it all started with a Kickstarter. And this Kickstarter, uh, we launched the Meta One, which was, for those of you who remember, the very first AR headset on the market. This was years before everyone else. And we learned uh, a ton. We learned so much from our customers. And I want to share with you everything that we learned in a very open way. Uh, and then I want to share the culmination of all of these learnings, which came to the Meta 2. We're going to demo for you today. Um, we've approached photorealism. That's something that I want to show off today. So uh, here's a, I'm hearing a couple of excite, excited woos. That's good. That's, that's real. So there's a lot of fake videos out there. Um, there's a lot of fake videos out there. So I took my iPhone and I put it behind the lens so you can see the exact quality of that. What do we think? Awesome. This eyeball is the size of a human being, by the way. This is immersive as well. Um, so we're going to have fun doing that. And of course, uh, it all starts three years ago, I'm sorry, five years ago, with the Meta One Kickstarter. So in Harlem, in a one-bedroom apartment at Columbia University, we hacked together this craziness. This is, is uh, Epson Muverio. That we, when I say hack together, I mean it literally. We took a knife and cut through the Muverio, placing uh, a depth sensor on top, so that you can have 3D input, 3D output. And this is the real first prototype that gave birth to this, to this uh, next chapter of computing. Um, and then we decided, we're excited about this. Let's check out if anyone else is excited about this. Um, and so we decided to put out a Kickstarter campaign. First of all, getting animators to, to work with you uh, with a $0 bud budget is really tough. So my friend Ben flew in from Australia, and uh, my friend Mike from New York, and they convinced a group of animators that this was Waz in the Garage, that this was um, uh, the next chapter of computing, except more trippy and with holograms. And somehow, uh, uh, they helped us out. And so that was how we got through the Kickstarter. Then, um, the next part of any Kickstarter, I don't know if you, if, if, have you tried to run a Kickstarter? Can you raise your hand if you've, if you've ever? Okay, there's a couple people in the crowd. Um, what's the hardest part? The endorsements. At least that was for me. So I decided to go after a North Star in our industry, Steve Feiner. He's here in the corner. Uh, Steve was one of the pioneers of augmented reality. And he was my professor and mentor at Columbia. Uh, getting an endorsement from Steve was like uh, going through a Jewish conversion process. You have, to, you have to get three no's before you get a yes, you know, and kind of persevere. Uh, except every no that I got from Steve resulted in another semester, a full semester of user interfaces uh, class I would have to take and get an A just to get no again. And this happened four times. By the fourth no, he broke and he joined our Kickstarter. So thank you, Steve. Um, and you know, we put this on the on we put this online and we measured. We wanted to see if if people were going to connect with this kind of a product. And so I want to picture picture this together today. We're sitting in a dorm room in Harlem, uh, all of us, and we're looking at a monitor of the Kickstarter orders coming in. The second order comes from Arup, 
the largest construction company in the world. The third order, and I still have the records to prove this, comes from Steve Wozniak. I have no idea how he got in so quickly. Um, and then Toyota places a bunch of orders and Ford, and it's just mind-blowing for a group of students hacking together stuff in a dorm room. So that was the beginning of, of, of the company um, and, and a memory that I reflect fondly on. So um, from that point on, it was all about what we learned from our customers. Our customers taught us, uh, first and foremost, they, they were coming from the realms of productivity. These were companies. I thought maybe this would be a 50-50 entertainment and productivity paradigm. 80% of our customers were productivity, only 5% were entertainment, and only 2% were from the gaming sphere. So that taught us very early on that this was about productivity. The next thing uh, we learned was pretty profoundly was the hardware, what people wanted from a real AR experience. The first thing they wanted was immersion, right? They wanted four three or four times larger than the, what the Meta One could provide or HoloLens could provide. They wanted that because it's critical for productivity. The next thing they wanted is photorealism, to be able to look at a single pixel line of CAD. And or when I'm visualizing a model of a building or a, a human anatomy, you have to get that resolution. The next thing was direct manipulation. So the ability to reach out and grab the hologram the way your brain wants to uh, was critical for our customers. Um, as opposed to using a gesture at a distance or using a controller or a mouse, they wanted to grab the holograms. And the next one was they wanted it collaborative. So two people can grab the holograms and pass them from one to the other. And finally and critically, everything between a meter and a half and closer had to be really crystal clear because that's where productivity happens. Our Meta One focal plane was infinity, and so uh, uh, we learned quickly how to, the, what people wanted. So we hired a, a group of 130 hardware and software experts, no longer hacking together uh, with knives and, um, and uh, uh, prototypes. Now these folks are building light field displays, advanced optical engines um, all together, and it's just an insane journey to be part of. Um, of the meta growth. And so um, we built, we took, we took our time and we really wanted to get this right, um, but we built a product that we think will satisfy these requirements. Uh, some of you may know these, these specs, but I'm going to just show you the, the new specs that we have. So 90 degree field of view you may know, but um, resolution we hit 2.5K, it's actually 21 pixels per degree, which means you can uh, look at Times New Roman 12 at 50 centimeters away in a holographic panel, and you can start with your Iron Man and uh, Minority Report workflow. Okay, this is all enabled by that, and it's really bright displays, so uh, we're super proud of that. Direct manipulation, check, natural collaboration, and of course, everything within even two meters and closer is super clear. Um, so that's where we're at, and taking the time to get it right and be patient uh, yielded results. Now uh, people are saying the following things about, you know, about, about us. Um, and I think that if we, if we put it in too prematurely, it would just wouldn't have been this experience. So we're also, we have a pretty fun announcement, which is that, if you jump to the next one, this is our uh, manufacturing facility. We're ramping up mass manufacturing. It's all local here in the USA. Um, and <laughs> got a little whistle. Why not? Assembly in the USA, just quality, quality, quality. And so um, we're getting ready to uh, fulfill everyone's orders over the course of the summer. Uh, so that's, that's our uh, little announcement. But the most, thank you. The most, the most profound thing, I think, is actually not the hardware. Um, this is something that we learned from our customers, but we also kind of intuited. You know, when the iPhone came along, there was half a dozen other smartphones before it, right? Uh, spanning all the way a decade earlier. But those smartphones didn't really take the time to get the user interface right. They were using, uh, you know, plastic keyboards from the past. They were using um, interfaces that were kind of glued together but really weren't as thought out as the operating system from Apple. And so we said, hey, we're going to take this time and really focus on that. Um, so how did we do this? First of all, what, what did we not do? We didn't put an operating system from the past into the headset. 
right? We decided we were going to think it from the ground up. And so we hired a professor from Stanford, a uh, professor of neuroscience, Stefano Baldassi, and a bunch of PhDs from the department, as well as Berkeley and UCSF. And we locked ourselves up in a room for two years, and we thought, what's the most natural and intuitive AR experience that we can possibly provide across every interaction technique that you'd expect in AR. And I'm happy to, to say that after uh, this, these years of research, you can now, and we're opening this today, this is the very first design guidelines for augmented reality. And uh, we're super proud of it. Now, wrapped around this is an operating environment, which we call the meta workspace, which is why I'm here today. Um, and out of the meta workspace came a series of inventions that all start from how the brain wants to process things. So, uh, you know, the user interface paradigm was, was, was what we obsessed about all, all of these, these, mon these months and years. And the problem with the UIs of the past, uh, well, let's look, not look at the problems. Let's just look at what happened in the past. So we had our command line interfaces. Even before that, punch cards, we have our mouse, we have our pinch to zoom, which allows us to scale about one plane, and it became much more natural and intuitive than anything that had come before this. So the user interface paradigm that we're opening up today is called air grab. And air grab is just what it sounds like. You, know, you reach out and um, you grab the hologram, you can manipulate it in X, Y, Z. You could do this kind of pinch to zoom, but stretch it in any axis with two hands, you can rotate, etc., cetera, et cetera. So we think that air grab is going to be the way that uh, people do AR for the next um, who knows how long, right? Um, so we took these kinds of ideas, we patented the heck out of them to protect from the big guys, um, and we opened them up for uh, developers and for people in this room to experiment with. Um, and I'd like to, no further ado, just kind of show you it, because uh, it's more fun. So uh, let's look at air grab. Thank you. All right. So we're going to switch to um, the feed. Can you... Cue joke. All right. Um, I'm super excited because look at this, Mama. Yep. How about that? So this was that, uh, let's start with an eye popper, huh? This was that um, eyeball that we saw at the beginning, and it's just, it's, it's, there's nothing else to say, but it's photorealistic. The, um, the quality of the hologram you see behind me is actually lower than what you'd expect in the headset, and I invite everyone to try this, because it's just, it's just beautiful. So how about it? You like it? All right. Cool. Um, so air grab, it's real simple. Your hand can occlude the hologram, and the hologram can occlude your hand to give you a depth uh, perception, a depth sensation. And real simple, when you, grab, when you touch the hologram, you make a fist, and these two concentric circles become one. And now it's a glowing uh, uh, dot over there indicating that you can move it around, and that's pretty much it. I mean, that's how the brain wants to do it, and that's how we, we're giving it to the user. But you can do the same thing with two hands by stretching, rotating, and uh, it's just, it's, I get goosebumps. <laughs> Honestly, guys, I get goosebumps from, from playing with this kind of technology because it's, it's been a dream for a long, long time. So um, that's uh, air grab, all right? Give a hand, round of applause to our team that, that worked really hard for this demo. But the, the bigger, bigger message I came to show off today is the meta workspace. The very first augmented reality operating environment built from the ground up for this medium. And this is the hardest part. Building light field optics is way easier. So I hope that you enjoy this next part. Let's go back. So um, I'm going to air grab the eyeball and place it in this thing. That's, uh, that's our Mac launcher. That's our you know, iOS home screen, basically. It's real simple. Um, and because this is photorealistic, so a couple things you might see here, 2D panels, you could browse the web spatially. There's a spatial web browser that comes with this. There's a Windows uh, desktop uh, duplicator that you can do anything you can do with your Windows uh, machine. Um, you have 3D models for a myriad of purposes, and 
let's just get started. So um, because of this real uh, uh, crazy resolution, this is, uh, you could actually read, and, and, and I don't uh, use a monitor anymore. For the last month, I've been just using the Meta Workspace. It's fully functional, you know, you could go into an email and check. Um, Here's uh, you know, something I might do in my own uh, personal workstation. I'll rotate using air grab, and then I'll, um, I'll place it kind of above, above the, uh, oops, above into the side kind of thing. So we can now spatialize our thoughts, which is a, a fun, little, um, fun little thing to try. Um, how about a little bit of distraction? Yeah, well, I get a clap for that. Zuckerberg would be proud. So um, here's, uh, you know, you could go into your photos. Um, you can, it's like a physical thing, so it reacts to your body very viscerally and physically. So sometimes, you know, you hit the side of the panel. But um, let's look at my office. This is the way I actually, uh, I do work these days. See that intense gaze? That's uh, me looking at holograms that may look like this. So this is kind of the future of, of maybe the PC era, where I could take anything I can do on a PC and put it around me. Um, so what do we think about that first stage? Yeah? Cool. But we're all here for the future, for the next step, right? So let's, the next step starts with 3D models. Let's go into that. All right. Um, this model is particularly mind-blowing to me. This is the uh, glass brain by Professor Adam Ghazali. This is uh, a real MRI scan, okay? Um, and when I, uh, when I spatialize my, my thoughts, my desktop, I like to put this guy kind of above to remind me what it's all about and where this is all going. Cool. So... Um, <laughs> So here's a, a, a model from our partner, BioDigital. Um, by the way, that first stunning eyeball comes from Intervoke and Sketchfab, our partners with the workspace. Now I'd like to show you a model by, uh, of the body by our friends at BioDigital. Um, you know, this reminds us that action comes from, not, you know, through the nervous system and the vascular system. And so... I might have a model like this on a typical day when I'm trying to get inspired. Stick, stick the head inside over there, why not? Okay, cool. I mean, guys, computing has just become as easy as Lego, so it's, 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 a, lot, it's a lot of fun. All right, but um, to be honest with you, it's not so much about the 3D models, as cool as they are, or about the panels. It's about something much bigger than that. Um, the, the, the paradigm, I think, will rest on the tools that are built for this operating environment. So I want to share with you some remarkable tools built by our developers. Let's go in. All right, first tool uh, from Brian from Coding Leap. He designed this mind mapping tool. I mean, this is something I've, I've wanted to do for a very, very long time, just mind map in AR. So here's the Meta 2, where, um, where this all culminates. And it's, for me as CEO, kind of a, a trade-off between all of these hardware and software features, right? So being able to spatialize the thoughts is just not something you can do in any other medium. And it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful experience uh, to try. Um, this is our, here's another tool designed by our uh, very own Mike Stein and his team at Meta. In a two-day hackathon, they built this. So I could take a picture with... Um, this button on my headset of anything in the workspace. See that? It's a little recursive. It's a little meta. Um, and, you know, this is going to make sure that you're not anxious anymore to erase a whiteboard. I mean, this has profound implications on pretty much ev everything that we do in, in our day-to-day -day work. So, uh, here are some, so here's another tool I really like. This was designed by Tim's team of our neuroscience uh, group, and it shows kind of the success versus failure rate of air grab. And it's showing you that it's about uh, one centimeter uh, or less accuracy, uh, error rate. But, you know, when I'm spatializing this plot and I look around in it, I could notice that there's a little bit more error in Z than I'd want, even though 
the cluster looks really nice in X and Y, so we can design affordances that make it even better um, uh, in depth. So that's kind of uh, the cool thing. I'll work in No Play Makes a Cranky CEO, so let's do some fun stuff. Audience participate. Who wants to come and play? Come, 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 quick. What's your name? What's your name? Valerie. Valerie, put your hand on mine, like that, good. And we're gonna go into this. And now you're gonna move your hand around. This is the very first holographic instrument in direct manipulation. And you could move your hand around and look at the screen, so, see that? Guys, a round of applause for Valerie, but Valerie. See that? I took a picture of you and we'll, uh, we'll send it to you later. Thanks so much, you're a rock star. Um, guys, this is gonna change the way we, we play we play instruments, and, and I'm, I'm just so inspired. Um, all right, very last thing I'm going to show you is um, this guy. So as I reflect back at the memories that came out of um, Meta, here's the, the first group that was in our, um, our three-bedroom house. And, um, you know, it's just been an amazing, amazing experience. Uh, imagine I could just take this out. And um, what's up? Yeah, sure. Give me a second. There we go. And uh, pull that out of my phone. Right? Maybe I want to take another, um, another photo out here. This is the cathedral, the first 50 employees. Let's see if that'll work. Look at that. <laughs> this is real, guys. This isn't hacked. This is just working. Um, and um, this is very important picture, gang, that I want to uh, add to my workspace. This is um, Sophie, my pup. All right. Always a, a crowd pleaser. But you can do more cool stuff with this. Here's a sticky uh, note app. I can draw sticky. I like to be productive with sticky notes. So what if I could just do kind of that? Or this, or this. Whoa. Or, uh, my friends, this is what got us all started. This is our Kickstarter, and um, it makes me a little emotional. Here it goes. The era of the flat device is now over, so we can let our imaginations run wild and make the software that we always wanted to build. Wait for it. I've been in a Steve Finer endorsement. For well over we made it. Years, and this is the most exciting time to be working in the field. Awesome. Amazing technology that's entering the well, guys, world. Right now, there's really been a nothing pretty cool else journey. out there that can Thanks for your time. All this, all this stuff comes with the Meta 2, all right? This is free with the Meta 2, so you can experiment with uh, your own spatialization of your office. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.